Hey everyone, so we are Defest and uh, I'm interviewing Rodi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Rodi, so for those who don't know you, can you present yourself and uh, tell us what you do at Google? Sure, yeah, my name is Rodi. I've been at Google for about five years. Um, when I joined, I was working on material design, uh, helping with the, the web and modern platforms. Uh, since then, I've been doing a lot with DevX, including Firebase Studio, Flutter, uh, helping with Angular, Gemini, even the Gemma launches really trying to bring the best of what Google has to offer in one place. Uh, Firebase has been a natural way to include all of these things in one type of umbrella and Firebase Studio more recently has been very first and foremost in, uh, in my efforts on trying to get people to use stuff. So what brought you to Google? Yeah, so uh, I kind of had a non-traditional background for uh, coming to development. I was an audio engineer who grew up in a very small town in Alabama, and uh, I wanted just to find all the ways that technology um, became uh, as a positive in my life. And I got into system administration and learned more things about how you can use computers to control stuff, which ultimately led me to uh, hearing about this thing where you could just control your phone by programming apps and be able to change stuff on your web page. And that's where I got into web development. And uh, it was not even within one year that I learned about Flutter. And I wanted to uh, learn as much as I could about building for every possible surface that you could see. Um, uh, there was a point in which I was working on a bunch of code and I realized that most of the people I was working with on GitHub were from Google. <laughs> and a lot of the Flutter team and Dart teams and a bunch of people I was like, okay, I really love open source. Maybe there's a way I can do this at Google and uh, uh, kicked off conversations and uh, here I am. What are the key moments or projects that shaped your path to where you are today? I think uh, for me, if you remember back in early Flutter, there was the create contest for where you could build an app. And one of the categories was how small of an app can you build? And the, the, the goal was five kilobytes, which is less than, I think it was two seconds of a song. Your entire app code had to fit in there. And uh, I actually won that contest outside of Google and I had built a piano. And uh, I built a full piano roll um, using that technique. And it was kind of that moment where I realized that I could bring the best of music and technology and programming under one umbrella and audio. And so from there, it just became, what kind of projects can I see where I can bring something that I have as a background to the table and to build something new? How do you see technologies like Flutter, Gemini, Firebase coming together to shape the way developers build today? Yeah, that's a great question. I think in today's world where everybody has a choice of agents, AI, frameworks, and targets, we're left with uh, a combinatory explosion of number of options that we can use. And it's not always like, well, this one's more performant than this one, so this one's always correct. In fact, it's more about like, what brings the best delight when working with it? What is the things that can have the, the lowest context not just for the model, but for humans being able to write it, and also what's the quickest path to be able to get something out there and get feedback. And I feel like right now at Google, we have a lot of really cool projects like Go and Firebase and Flutter that, and Angular and so many more that really bring in the best of that DX. And then with things like Firebase, we can easily deploy our applications all with just like very simple ways of describing your logic. I mean, you can get into Kubernetes and a bunch of other deep things inside Google Cloud, and hopefully we can be that, that ramp to get you there. But a lot of developers are like, I have this crazy idea that I wanna vibe code or I wanna build over the weekend. And hopefully we have our SDKs ready for you to get started and have something running on your Android or, or phone at any point. So how do you see agents you know, fitting into developer workflow or app logic today? Yeah, so I, I feel like uh, the first step of the agent adoption has been you uh, install a bunch of MCP servers and you uh, see what kind of tools can be run. But really it's, okay, uh, how much can the model do? And then also it's getting overloaded. And so the next phase that we're entering in is like, which agents are most important at what time? And I think that's where we're starting to see um, selective uh, kind of tool calling, the ability to have different specialized ways of entering it 
And then also like extended sessions, like there, there's tools like Jules and a bunch of other really cool ones that you can, the thing may take overnight to finish, but it may try lots of different iterations. Uh, we have ways of working with um, our extensions on top of Gemini CLI and you can bring in all these really cool things and uh, with the right amount of combinations, I can be a security agent or I can be a testing um, engineer or I can be someone that is really just targeted on prototyping. And I think now we're starting to see um, instead of just the model with tools, like the specialization into uh, sub, sub agents. So Signal got a lot of attention, you know, in the photo community. Yeah. What uh, motivates you to uh, create a sort of a package like that? And uh, what gap was you trying to fill? So with Signals, it, it was funny because I lived in both worlds, web and Flutter and um, even desktop and full stack. But one of the things I've been noticing with the JavaScript community is they were starting to align on state management. And the fact that JavaScript frameworks were aligning on a single tool or a way of approaching it took me uh, a moment to be like, what, what's going on here? Like, why, why are they choosing this thing versus what's built in? And then when I realized it had nothing to do with the frameworks and it was just this reactive primitive, it was, I, I, I wanted to find a way to bring that as Flutter as fast as possible. Uh, not only that, uh, after I ported it and got it working, uh, it just brought a lot of delight to a lot of users. I, I thought it was really cool to see the community and uh, how they did it. And uh, a fun story about uh, the Signals package. When I was building the first version, I was so excited and I was uploading it to Pub and someone had the Signals name. And I was oh. like, oh no, like I can't get it. I have to rename it. So I had to upload it as Preact Signals. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, let me go try to figure out who it was. <laughs> and it was the person that I reported to, two oh. people above me. And oh. so he gave me, the, wow. gave me the name. Yeah, that's cool. And so how do you see it shape in the future, especially in the state management contest in Flutter? Yeah, I think uh, one of the cool things about Flutter is you can decide how you want to render or what type of reactive primitives you want to use. Uh, some people have very specific architectural concerns or ways of approaching building really big applications. And one of my goals uh, with Signals is just to be able to provide new primitives that um, hopefully one day can be added to Dart or Flutter, but that can make it easier for you to build all these types of reactive applications without having to add that much. And even if it never gets added, it still is such a small abstraction that you can pretty much build um, multiple types of paradigms on top. Hmm. Interesting. So you've done a lot of vibe coded projects. Um, yeah, so what are the projects you are most proud of? Yeah, I, I think one of the one of the more fun projects that I did recently um, was a I made a CLI extension for Google Fonts that I completely built with Gemini CLI. And uh, I had it download the Google Fonts repo and the material icons repo and create a SQLite database of all the icons and fonts so it could run offline. And uh, it was a way that I wanted to learn how far I could go without a bundler because Node now ships with TypeScript. And so I could uh, do the entire, like search for a font, search for a fun font or whatever, all without needing internet access. Oh, cool. So what keeps you motivated, you know, to keep building uh, this product? I know your job at uh, Google is also a big part of uh, your professional career, but uh, outside of that, what yeah. keeps you motivated to keep building hobby projects and uh, keep pushing boundaries in the, you know, different communities? I think for me, uh, for anybody that's known me for any length of time, like I like to do what's called like excitement driven development. I, I get so excited about new technology, new ways of approaching problems, new uh, techniques that are applied to existing problems. So like uh, if there's, there's so many like really cool gold mines and like old projects, like especially stuff that's like 10, 20 years old, because we're all solving the same problems just with different languages. And uh, when you approach it with curiosity and with excitement, you really start to get rid of tribalism or those thoughts in your head that are like, uh, well, I can't use this because it's in that language or I can't do that because it's too old or whatever. We approach it like, what is there, what knowledge is there for me to just, you know, uncover? And you then start to approach everything differently because uh, you get to talk to people, you get to like find people that actually built the thing, you uh, discover it, try to get it running. And I, I've always found that there, you can learn so much just by being not afraid to try it out, so. 
Yeah, so um, you are at the crossroad of AI, uh, Flutter, and Cloud. I would like to know how does this, uh, you know, journey start? Like the way you are able to switch in terms of uh, technology really quick and uh, be mm -hmm. able to, yeah, push new things every single time. Um, for me, I've really tried to focus on like being full stack and cross platform. Um, and AI just happens to touch every layer of the stack. Um, Flutter touches all the, the breadth, all the platforms. And uh, Firebase and these other solutions have been at so many different parts of the layers that I wanted to come to the table with like, how do I build those end to end examples? How do I show people how to not just start here, but like take it so much further and deploy it. And really it just comes from working with amazing people. Like, you know, uh, having those conversations, having those relationships, like, um, we, we're all talking about the same stuff and we only share information and it gets better. So what are the key steps for teams uh, wanting to integrate AI in their workflows and apps? Yeah, I would say one of the best ways to start is to approach it not like you're solving a tool that is doing the same thing you're doing manually and just trying to automate it, but rather what types of new ways can you unlock uh, that you haven't been able to do before? Or how can I approach this thing to, to learn how I can bring it into my workflow so that it can, one, reduce toil, uh, like for example, like maybe you could have it triage issues on GitHub or you can have it automate uh, keeping your documentation up to date. You know, all the things that like you may not enjoy doing, you can have it do the other parts while you can really focus on the, the amazing stuff. So it's very interesting that you talked about it because uh, I was discussing with ID. Uh, he's also a GDE, um, and uh, he showed me his uh, agent or orchestration workflow, and that was very interesting because he was able to, uh, you know, from uh, GitHub issues, he, he can get the GitHub issues and feed them into um, uh, apps like uh, Jira, you mm. know, to manage the whole uh, issues. And every single time that the AI finishes uh, its uh, work, yeah, the status of uh, the issue got updated on Jira, oh, which cool. is very interesting. So I, I really love that you talk yeah. about these things. Awesome. So um, another question is, uh, what advice would you give, you know, to developers that want to really integrate AI into their own workflows? Yeah, I would say um, one of the best ways you can start is uh, approaching it as if uh, you may have read some stuff online or seen other people do it. Know that the way you're going to use AI is deeply personal and going to be a different workflow. Prompts that other people use are not going to work for you. And even if they do, they might change over time. So really try to come up with a way where you can be set up for success, where you can start to constrain the outputs to things that you understand and things that you can work with so you can change variables and get new, new kind of stuff out. How do you stay creative? One of the best ways is to have really cool relationships. I feel like uh, every week I'm talking and syncing with people at Google where um, I can get inspired and hopefully inspire other people. And it's the human connection, the human relationships that allow us to just build and be creative because like there's something to build for. Tell me, so MCP is around and uh, it's empowering even like many agents and everything. Have you experimented MCP? What do you think about MCP? I think MCP is really cool. In fact, I'm even really curious at the new uh, proposal to add long running tasks to MCP and also even implement uh, gRPC mm -hmm. as an MCP uh, uh, protocol. Um, MCP is awesome. It's obviously not a, a full solution, but I think there's a lot of potential. Interesting. Okay, you have any final word? There's a lot that Google offers and it may be overwhelming. And I understand that sometimes people may be tired of hearing about AI or tired of hearing about one thing or the other, but just encourage everybody to focus on like that human connection. Like we, we build better together. Let's come up with really cool ways that we can bring this new technology into this era where we can build things that were never possible or even um, approachable before. Um, uh, I found that even just having my relatives use AI has already been dramatically eye-opening to see how they can ask completely different questions and break it in a way I never could think of, so. Well, Rodi, thank you very much for your time. Thank Congrats. you.